to order the current Council of Government's Transportation Planning C Policy Committee. Roll call, please. Do you want to do flag salute? I always miss that. Let's do the flag salute. <laughs> salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Couch. Here. Here. Helton. <coughs> Peacock. Thank you. Blades. Crump. Here. Warney. Cryer. Here. Mendibles. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. Prout. Here. Raina. Here. Scribner. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Tafoya. Here. Trujillo. Here. And Vasquez. Here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification. Make a referral to staff for factual information to request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Prior to making a presentation, do we have any public comments? Anybody online? Public comments? No. Thank you. Special action item, Assembly Bill 361, authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. And I'll give that to Becky, but I will say that January, February will be our last meetings that we can, we will need a quorum in person, and then we can still have some people teleconference in, correct? Yeah, well, the way the, now, the way I read it, but I think we ought to uh, look to our attorney, is that you, each person will get up to three, depending on how many meetings we have, up to three that they can call in virtually, but they have to, they have to say why they can't come in person. And got to have a hall pass the, from the doctor? Yeah. <laughs> no, they, you don't have to say anything about, you know, medical issues or anything like that, but you have to you have to basically declare an emergency and say, you know, I have a family emergency or I have a Really? Yeah. Hmm. So it's or I'm ill or you does know our, something like does that, our but council you you agree with that interpretation. This is, this is something that's still coming together. I will report back in the January meeting. Uh, we'll still be authorized at that time. Yeah, but, but that does not re relieve us fr from still having a quorum in person. 
Correct. Th 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 that's still required, period. Right. After, after March 1st. Thank you. It's going right. to be cumbersome. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay. So back to tonight. Any, anything the state does makes it cumbersome. So, um, yes, this is our resolution so that we can continue uh, until the governor takes off the COVID um, emergency. Um, and what staff is asking is that you adopt resolution number 22-48, which will extend the period of time from November 17th, 2022 to December 17th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any comment? I have a motion. 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 Who made the motion online? Defoya. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to take I'm going to take um, couch as the motion and Defoya as a second. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Vasquez. Yes. 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 Bill Smith. Yes. Tafoya. Aye. Bob Smith. I'm here. Yes. Raina. <laughs> yes. Prout. <coughs> yes. Crichton. Yes. Mendibles. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Warney. It's my first time here. I'm going to have to ask what I'm voting on uh, this, it's just an, it's a resolution where we're extending the time that we can meet both virtually and in person ah yes thank you uh crump yes couch <coughs> yes thank you mr chairman Thank you. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before the action is taken. Does anybody, any member of the public wish to take something off the consent agenda? Does any council member wish to take something off consent? Seeing none. Motion on consent. Second. Roll call vote, please. Thank you. Couch? <laughs> yes. Peacock? Yes. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Caltrans Report District 6. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Lorena Mendibles. Oh, I'm sorry, Becky. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm sitting in on behalf of my deputy director, Michael Navarro. He has another uh, engagement that he had to attend to. Uh, today is um, our uh, um, projects and updates for uh, Caltrans. Um, Clean California update for cycle two uh, local programs. Um, expect a call for uh, projects in January and applications will be due in 2023. 
a stakeholder workshop will be held uh, December 13th from 1 p.m. to 2.30, and we will be sending emails on that information. Um, next is the notice of funding for reconnecting uh, communities and highways to Boulevard. Uh, workshop will be November 28th from 1 p.m. to 2.30, and guidelines of, of this of this uh, funding program will be emailed. Uh, an, another funding program will be sustainable transportation planning grants, fiscal year 22-23. Uh, One-time augmentation of 50 million in climate adaptation. Planning grants will be uh, allotted. Um, furthermore, sustainable communities grants and strategic partnership grant funding will also be available. We will be having a call for projects uh, we hope for in December. And um, we will be holding a grant workshop hybrid format, um, we hope in December or January. Next are the projects. Uh, Bakersfield Freeway Connector Route 58 and 99 Modify Interchange. Contract was scheduled, um, it was expected completion date, uh, winter of 2022. Um, all uh, hot mix asphalt pavement has been completed except for final lift and entrance to future south bound Ming Avenue off ramp. Uh, next project, uh, oh, and this project is also 85% complete. Next project is State Route 99 Rehab, Palm Avenue overchange to Birdsley Canal Bridge. Project is complete and construction acceptance was, was done October 31st of 2022. Next project is Old US 99 to White Lane State Route 99 Rehabilitation Project. Stage two, um, this project is currently under construction. Stage two traffic handling at south end of the project is underway. We anticipate uh, restriping, restriping at the end of November. Stage five activities between Panama Lane and White Lane will continue. Currently northbound off ramp to Panama is closed. Anticipate opening late in November. Uh, continued reinforced concrete uh, is placement is during is currently being placed underway at Panama ramp and miscellaneous landscape underway through above this, the limits. Expected completion date is fall 2023. Uh, next project is Union Avenue High Intensity Activated Crosswalk. Excuse me. Um, Union Avenue High Intensity Activated Crosswalk project located at the intersection of State Route 204, Union Avenue and 8th Street. And, this, and, and here we will be installing a hawk project um, achieved ready to list on December 2021. And uh, the project started construction in mid-June and the contractor has completed most of the work. Signal poles have arrived to continue with construction. Uh, Santa Fe Roundabout, project located in Shafter at Santa Fe and Los Angeles Avenue intersection. Uh, it is in PS&E phase, plan specifications and estimates was achieved on October 7th, 2022, and it's anticipated to begin construction in spring of 2025. Uh, next project is the State Route 46 Conventional Expressway Segment 4B, convert two-lane conventional highway to a four-lane facility in and near Lost Hills from two miles west of California Aqueduct Bridge to 1.4 miles east of Lost Hills Road. Opening of the four lanes from Lost Hills Road to east end of the project is going to happen mid to late November. And then bridge construction, girder erection is complete. Bridge deck on schedule to be poured in December of 2022. And retaining wall construction is ongoing. Scheduled completion date is December 2023. And uh, next project is State Route 46 gap closure segment. Uh, this is gonna be converting two lane conventional highway to four lane facility in Kern County on Route 46 in and near Lost Hills from 1.3 miles west of Brown Material Road to 0.2 miles east of the California Aqueduct. Project is anticipated to go to the December California Transportation Commission meeting, the CTC, with a construction date of April 2023. Um, I believe next project is the Taft 
left turn channelization, install left turn channelization on State Route 119 on Kern Street and Airport Road. Project achieved ready to list on April 15th, 2022. Construction anticipated to start in December of 2022. Next project is State Route 184, Sunset Roundabout. The project is at the intersection of State Route 184 at Sunset near Weed Patch. Construction started on October 3rd, 2022 with full closure of the intersection. Detour is in place and is 10% complete. Expected completion date is winter of 2022. Um, Arvin State Route 223, State Route 184 Roundabout project. Construction started, 75% of it is complete. Stage three in progress, which consists of construction of splitter islands and roundabout center. Roundabout expected to open to traffic around mid-December. And that is all I have today. If Is there any questions or any concerns that I can um, discuss or follow back with my um, with staff and engineers. Yeah, I, any questions? I have a couple. Um, Mr. Navarro was very helpful, and and we had uh, bicycle lane and and green paint at 99 and 58 24 Street uh, westbound, and they were going to work on the eastbound. And I was wondering if any design or any ideas. I've written that a couple times recently, and it's doable but difficult at this time so eastbound 24th street rosedale highway at 99 uh, would be helpful rosedale highway. Bi bicycle, okay. bicycle access and then also underneath 99 at the kern river the bike path goes underneath there and there are lights that are not working and okay i believe that's caltrans responsibility Mm hmm Does anybody else have anything for District 6? Hearing none, District 9. District 6. I, I'm sorry, actually, I do. This is Kipoya. Okay. I just have, uh, if you have any updates on the Perkins and Sherwood overpass. I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? If you have any update on the Perkins and Sherwood overpass. Let me see my notes if I have anything. You know, let me let me research that real quick and then I can get back to you. Great, thank you. Okay. Perkins and over Perkins and Sherwood. Perkins and okay. Sherwood, Lorena. Did okay. you get that? All right, thank you. I just I couldn't hear that. Okay, Perkins and Sherwood. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for District Six? District Nine report. Okay, great. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, really appreciate it. First, I'd like to introduce um, a new member of um, our team, at least in um, in relation to uh, work with you guys. Uh, Rick Franz, a longstanding district staff member. Rick, raise your hand. Um, Rick is going to basically be your new regional planning liaison for Caltrans District 9 out there in Eastern Kern. Um, he's our um, LDR or our local development review lead and basically is going to be handling all things uh, Kern County, as it were, uh, East Kern anyway. Um, Catherine Carr, your previous um, a regional planning liaison, has taken a position as our regional funding specialist. So she'll still be um, intimately involved in partnership with you guys in terms of grant applications, um, putting together funding partnerships and, and so forth and so on. So I'd like to congratulate and thank Rick for um, taking on this this new position um, and you'll be seeing him uh, more frequently um, moving forward. Um, in terms of updates for you, um, I want to also thank Linda and, and Rob for all of their help getting letters of support together for our TSEP application, our Trade Corridor Enhancement Program application for the State Route 58 truck climbing lane project. This is a really important partnership for all of us and there are some positive indications that we might be in a good position for both the uh, state and federal funds for that project. 
Um, so stay tuned for, for more on that. And again, thank you to staff for, for our, the partnership, um, pu pulling all of that together. Um, since there were, since our district six friends already talked about the sustainable transportation planning grant program and others, I'll skip those notes. Um, and then just basically uh, note that uh, we're working in district nine on a, on something that you guys have been working on for a while there, which is a zero emission electric vehicle and um, infrastructure charging infrastructure um, plan for all of um, the Eastern Sierra, including East Kern. Um, so there's lots of money, um, both at the state and federal through multiple programs. Um, so stay tuned for, for more information on that in terms of how we can better partner with you and leverage the, the work that you guys are already doing in that space. Um, in terms of projects, the Cummins Valley Road left turn project on State Route 202 uh, um, is, uh, you know, cr crews are, are widening the highway over there and constructing a left-hand turn lane. Uh, work is going to be continuing on that project seven days a week from seven to five. Um, and, and like a lot of our projects, unfortunately, there's going to be some delay up to 20 minutes uh, in terms of uh, one-way traffic control. Um, similarly, the Roseman Mojave Rehabilitation Project, uh, where our crews are adjusting guardrail delineators and repairing guardrails, um, is going to be taking place uh, during during normal business hours, eight to four. Um, similarly, our Edwards Utility Project um, over there on State Route 58 between Claymine Road and Claymine uh, Road overpass um, is going to be taking place. They're working on uh, they're doing some utility work over there on the eastbound shoulders. Um, that's also going to be taking place um, between 7.30 and 5 o'clock every day. Um, just like the work that we're doing over on Jack's Ranch Road, um, we're doing some pavement improvements over there, putting down a slurry seal, uh, doing some uh, roadway striping um, uh, uh, updates, as it were. Um, and over in Indian Wells, we're doing some utility work there on 395 um, in between um, uh, Indian Wells Canyon Road and the junction with uh, 395 on State Route 14. Um, in terms of projects within Kern County, uh, the Roseman Mojave Rehab Project is uh, going to, is is currently in construction, and it's it's anticipated to be completed within the next couple weeks. Um, they're just basically finishing adjustments to their metal beam metal beam guardrail. I got two more for you. Um, in terms of uh, Freeman Gulch uh, uh, segment three, we're going to be opening bids on the fifteenth of December. So look forward to that going to construction. And the last note I have for you um, is those, those are our project updates. And the last update I have for you on the planning front is that we're seeing a lot of um, emerging development over on the Highway 14 corridor in Eastern Kern. Um, we are really excited about our partnership with the county uh, and the COG um, to deal with some of the locally driven, um, uh, local development driven improvement needs um, throughout that entire area. We have the Mojave Inland Port coming. We are seeing lots and lots of uh, industrial solar farm and other kinds of developments taking place out there. So really want to elevate that East Kern um, section of the district um, and of the county, um, you know, as an emerging priority for our planning and, and project delivery partnerships. Those are the updates I have for you. Thank you. Any questions for Caltrans District 9? Is this Phil Attachby? I uh, just uh, continue to thank you for your efforts on the truck climbing lanes, and you just mentioned again the in the uh, 14 area, uh, Mojave Inland Spaceport, and I just want to keep a focus. Anything like Barstow Mojave, any kind of goods movement from the east, is going to have a significant impact on Highway 58. So this brings to bear an even greater focus on those truck climbing lanes as this is going to exasperate our, our 20 year effort to get those installed. So thank you for your efforts and keep that in mind when we've got these eastern uh, areas that are going to impact the, the goods movements on 58. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. If I could, just maybe another couple of moments here. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to introduce Rick to you all. Um, so Rick is in, in communication with Caltrans District 8. Uh, out of San Bernardino, and um, and what we've done is we've asked them to provide us with all of the data regarding the trip generation, um, the good movement um, origination and destination data, so forth and so on, coming out of that proposed Barstow Inland Port. I mean, we have our own Mojave Inland Port, and we're responsible for that. 
the county the county frankly is responsible for um but to make sure that we have a bead on how those developments that are outside of the county are going to be affecting us and our and our network is critically important detail so we met with um our counterparts over there with district date a couple weeks ago um put these concerns on our radar uh, on their radar um and have requested that they share with us their analysis so i want to make sure that you uh, that i'm clearly communicating with you guys that this is um absolutely um front and center in our awareness um planning for the region thank you any other comments Hearing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I just have a couple of items on this agenda. Next C CTC meeting is December 7th and 8th in Riverside. I will be attending in person. There are several items of interest uh, to Kern Cog and our cities and, and the county. So I, I imagine uh, staff of several of the cities will also be attending. Over the past month, we've continued to have discussions and there's been uh, numerous developments on State Route 99 and State Route 58. I've talked to you about most of those, Mr. Chairman, and we'll have an item on uh, our next meeting. State Route 204 and Union Avenue uh, work is proceeding, and I want to thank uh, Caltrans for getting those uh, uh, mast arms delivered from Fresno uh, to Bakersfield. Thank you for making that happen, Caltrans. Continue to work with Caltrans on 7 Standard and 43 and the county um, to get that project in a position so um, either Congressman Valadeo or maybe Congressman Salas, we'll see when that race is called, uh, can help us get to the finish line on that project. Um, I've reported before um, that it, Caltrans has agreed to uh, implement safety improvements on State Route 33, and that project is um, proceeding with those safety improvements that uh, we and members of the legislature and Supervisor Couch have asked for. Specifically, it's adding shoulders to a project that was uh, not initially uh, planned to have shoulders. So thank you for all who were involved in that. Um, work continues to progress on State Route 46. We continue to meet monthly and sometimes twice a month on that project. Unfortunately, the weather has gotten a little colder over the last few weeks. We were not able to uh, do the paving we wanted to, but we are going to open up uh, that stretch if you pass through there from the community of Lost Hills all the way to the freeway um, in advance of paving. We'll put in some temporary stripes so we don't have to leave it as two lanes for the next four or five months. And then finally, I want to publicly thank Mayor Smith from Tehachapi and uh, literally dozens of other people who I've talked to over the last month about the truck climbing lanes. And I, too, uh, am feeling good that um, we're going to have an announcement in the next month or two that we're going to be successful in getting a grant. If, if for some reason we're not successful, we will continue until we find the money to um, to build that project. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Uh, this is Phil again, and I want to thank uh, Aaron. Uh, and uh, uh, Linda Urata was able to get me two telephone calls set up for uh, some folks at the Department of Transportation. I spoke with a Mr. Paul Balmer at DOT in Washington to reiterate our concerns uh, for the last 20 years for the truck climbing lane. And then I think it was November 2nd, I was able to get uh, a telephone uh, conference with uh, Mr. Charles Small. He's the, uh, I think his title was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Transportation. And uh, Aaron uh, was on that call with me and our City of Tashby Development Directors uh, services director Jay Schlosser was on there and they spent a good uh, 20 30 minutes with us going over our needs so it was just nice to have a conversation with someone who's 3,000 miles away and it's regarding the grant application uh, Caltrans and Kern Cog have made uh, for that uh, for that uh, the, the mega grant project 
multimodal projects discretionary grant, MPDG. So thank you for your efforts and thank you, Aaron, for continued support. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, this is regarding item 4C of the agenda. The funding of the Wasco and Tehachapi CMAC project is a great example of cooperation in our county. Specifically, I want to thank the following agencies for their help in moving these projects forward. County of Kern for their willingness to def defer funding of the Mills and Park project. Michael Navarro of Caltrans for uh, tremendous assistance in accelerating Wasco's environmental process. Kern Cox staff for guiding each of the agencies through this process and our City of Wasco staff for thinking outside the box and working to make this a win-win solution. I do recognize that there were failures on our part and that's why I am the more appreciative of all the help. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments? Hearing none, we will adjourn that meeting and go to the Kern Cog meeting. Same roll call. Uh, public comments are the same. Do we have any public comments for this meeting? Hearing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Any public comments on the consent agenda? Hi, good evening, chairman and board. This is Christine with the city of Arvin. I did want to comment um, and express my gratitude to the current Council of Governments, to the board, to the TTAC and the RPAC. During our outreach process, it was very arduous. There were a lot of workshops related to REAP 2.0. And I'm happy to see that Arvin's project has made it onto the list. I do have one request and that request is to the contingency item as well, so Arvin submitted a request for $7.3 million. And uh, so far we have got support for our project in the amount of 5.6 with Arvin's project also making it into the contingency list along with the Hageman bike path. And I would request that the board support uh, Arvin's contingency project be listed as contingency contingency project number one because it meets all the requirements of REIT 2.0. It reduces vehicle miles traveled. It will supply affordable housing in an area that desperately needs it. And it also affirmatively furthers fair housing. So with that, I just wanted to express my gratitude um, as you're going into this agenda item. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. That item is not on the consent agenda, so we will discuss that later. Thank you. Uh, back to the consent agenda. Anybody wish to take anything off the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion? Motion. So moved. We have motion second, roll call vote. Couch. Yes. Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Kraut. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Now we're on the Regional Early Action Planning 2.0 Grant Funding Program, Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm not gonna go over all the preliminary stuff that's at the beginning of the staff report because um, this group has heard most of it before. Um, where we are now is that the TTAC and the RPAC conducted two in-person workshops. One was on Wednesday, September 28th, 
and the other was on Wednesday, October 12th. During both workshops, each potential applicant was allotted time to present their project and answer questions. Following the second workshop, the TTAC and RPAC were given a survey to rank the projects in their order of preference, with one being the most uh, desired project and five being the least. The most desired project was the City of Bakersfield Senior Center Affordable Housing Project with a ranking of 1.5. Number two was the City of Shafter, which is a self-help tract, 6713, uh, to uh, offset some impact fees that are keeping that project from being built. Uh, it ranked at a 2.5. Uh, Arvin was uh, number three with its uh, Keeping It Green and San Joaquin uh, collaborative project at 3.417. And number four was City of Wasco with alley reconstruction for um, ADUs, which are auxiliary dwelling units. Um, with a 3.5 and then the city of Bakersfield Hageman bike path at 4.583. I do want to go over the timeline very quickly. The grant application is due very soon on December 31st of 2022 and all of these projects that um, I just discussed, uh, the uh, member agencies are working hard to get the information to me to fill out the, uh, the grant application. Uh, by December, I think it's December 1st. The encumbrance deadline, which means that all funds must be awarded and encumbered um, or sub-allocated by June of 2024. Um, and the expenditure and closeout report, which means all funds have to be expended and the project, uh, at least the portions of the project that are being built with the grant funding um, due, are due June 30th of 2026. So it's a very tight time frame. Uh, the TTAC and the RPAC held a joint meeting on Wednesday, November 2nd to discuss the potential projects and the results of the joint workshops. And again, each of the potential applicants was questioned at length about their project. And after discussion, uh, the RPAC chairman, uh, Mark Staples, made a motion to direct the applicants to have their grant information to me by December 1st, 2022. Uh, chairman Staples also made a motion to recommend to the Kern Cog Board that a grant application be submitted to Housing and Community Development Community Development in the amount of 12670 $12,670,717. I, I don't think in those kinds of dollars. So, sorry. Um, for the following Expand project. Expand your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> um, for the following projects. You'd think I would working for the COG. I mean, everything costs a million dollars now. Um, the Wasco Alley Rehabilitation for 750000 Shafter Track 6713 for 230235 The Bakersfield Senior Center Affordable Senior Housing and Facility at $6 million, And Arvin Keeping It Green in the San Joaquin for $5,690,482. And they also asked that we... Um, add the two projects as a contingency onto the application and um, I'm working with HCD to see how I do that. So uh, the, that motion was seconded and adopted with a unanimous roll call vote and the uh, action that we're asking for tonight is to approve the recommendation of the TTAC and the RPAC and to adopt resolution number 22-49 and authorize the chairman to sign. And that resolution is um, to allow us to apply for the grant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm open to any questions you may have. Thank you. Would, would the question from Arvin was uh, to prioritize the contingency. Is there a prioritization on the contingency as we have now? That Well, they're really, they're, it, the way the resolution reads, and let me see if I can find it in here. Maybe 
the attorney can help me. There was a place in the resolution that said that we could only apply for our, our allocation. And do you recall that, Brian, at all? So, I so the original so the original list adds up to the 12.6 million. Correct. But they, I mean, you can, we could put them on there, but primarily they're going to look at the 12, 12 million six. Okay. Good question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. So, just so we understand, the, the purpose of the contingency list is if other agencies can't perform or if there's money that doesn't get applied for that's still available? The way the, the way the guidelines read is that if there is any money left over from other agencies, that it will go into a competitive process. Uh, we have had, um, on a valley-wide basis, we've had a couple of calls with um, HCD, and their comment is that with this short time light, they don't think that they would be able to put together another call for projects which would be a competitive call for projects. So they think it would, they told, indicated to me that it would just, they think it will just go back into the state general fund. But whether that, they don't really know for sure. This is, our, this is our attempt to be ready if that eventuality, well, and if also, it's available. Uh, Mr. Chairman and yeah. Supervisor Couch, also if any of the primary projects that we submit are un unable to meet the deadline or be delivered. We want to make it crystal clear that we have other projects that uh, are will likely be ready. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? So I think what I'm hearing, there's no prioritization of the contingency. That's correct. Okay. Certainly. There is no prioritization, but that was the question whether or not there would be prioritization discussed at the RPAC and TTAC, and they decided not to, or that just didn't come up then? On the... Both the projects that were, that are proposed to be on the contingency now were prioritized by the RPAC and the TTAC and they ha they have rankings. And right, that was that was on your staff report that's this list. This was the priority that the TTAC and the RPAC came up with. Priority comes from the rank from the ranking. From the from the from the survey right. ranking. Um, but on the on the application it's going to be up to HCD how much, what projects that they approve for funding. Um, they're going, the, the way w we understand that the process is going to work is they're going to get our application. They're going to go over it with, their, it, OPR is involved in this, the Tr Strategic Growth Council is involved involved with it, this, HCD is involved with this, and CARB is involved with this. So those four agencies are going to have to agree that a project is a valid project for this money. Then on the pro if the project, if they have questions on the project, they'll go back and forth with KernCog and then and I'll be going back and forth with the member agencies to answer the to answer HCD's questions but ultimately it's HCD's yay or nay on a on whether a project meets the reap guidelines and how much money they get they indicated to me that what we ask for in, in, in the fund, that it's up to us to determine how the funding is allocated. Okay. But if, they're, if they disapprove a project, they will move money to another project that is on our list. Okay. I know that's clear as mud. But <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world these days. 
Any other comments? Mr. Hightower. State your name good and smile big. Good evening, Chair. My name is Troy Hightower. I'm a local consultant, and I have a question about the procedure. If for any reason the, the applicants, I'll call them, that have proposed projects, if they don't provide the information by that December 1st deadline or what they present doesn't meet the threshold requirements, does staff have the ability to pull those uh, proposed projects out of the application? Or does it have to come back to the board? Or well, we I, won't have time for that. <laughs> I would not go against board's direction. If the board says they want a project put into the application, I'll put it in with whatever information I have. Okay, that's my question because the time frame is so. What's your question? Is what's the procedure going to be if? one of those projects, they don't provide the necessary information for the application. So those what applicants- What I think I'm hearing is that we are going to submit whatever we have at the time of the deadline. Right, that, that answers my question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second. Roll call vote. Couch. Yes. Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Can I ask who seconded that motion? I know that um, Raina, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. As a reminder, um, nominations for the 2021 Regional Awards of Merit deadline is Thursday, December 1st. We will need an ad hoc committee to review. We, well, let me say we may need an ad hoc committee to review and select these. Or, well, let me restate that. <laughs> we would like to you to volunteer for an ad hoc committee. <laughs> they, they may be asked to meet, and sometimes they are not asked to meet if, if depending on how many applications we get and, and how we do, how staff does, and what they think. So if, uh, at your pleasure, if you would like to volunteer for that, uh, please let us now, know now. Do you have any applications or nominations yet? We've had inquiries, but we don't have any nominations in hand yet, no. So I see uh, Mayor Prout, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Crier raising their hands. Anyone else interested? Okay. And Supervisor Couch. We, we will we will let you know if we need to meet in person. Okay, in your folders this evening is a copy of the regional award uh, nomination form. Um, some sad news: uh, a regular attendee of this uh, board, uh, John Spaulding, has a copy of his obituary. He passed away recently. May he rest in peace. Timeline um, covering November through February. Biking and walking community safety meeting flyer that outlines uh, several of the upcoming events. And Linda, were we able to swap out that uh, and schedule a meeting for Maricopa? Yes, Maricopa. And and Mayor Crump, Maricopa will we will have a meeting in Maricopa. Yeah, we're swapping out um, Maricopa in place of McKittrick. Okay, thank you for that input, uh, uh, Mayor Crump. Another copy in English and Spanish of a flyer for that, um, for that ATP-funded project. 
schedule of cash disbursements for August and September, and an update on Kern County electric vehicle public charging spaces by zip code. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, this says our next meeting is December 15th, and I believe that's not true. We, we will be dark next month. The ad hoc committee, if needed, will uh, use that time to, to meet. Before, before you adjourn, Chris. Mr. Couch, Supervisor Couch. You know, sometimes, uh, well, at the county, sometimes we adjourn a meeting in memory of someone, and we send a letter to the family that, to that effect. Could we adjourn tonight's meeting in memory of John Spalding and send them a letter that the chairman would sign to that effect? Sure, we can do that. Okay. I can get you I can get you a copy <laughs> of what it <laughs> looks like. Okay. It's it's pretty it's pretty simple. It just says that we recognized him and Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Meeting adjourned.